Good morning. Oh, that was pretty good. Maybe I'll let you go this time. Welcome to the Gaylord Resort. I am so pleased and privileged to serve as your president and to lead the open opening general session for the 2015 annual meeting. It's great to see all of you, and especially our friends from the north. This meeting highlights our unique and special partnership with the Association of Faculties of Pharmacy of Canada. It affords us the opportunity to share commonalities and understand our differences, expand our research and education missions, and take a novel look into the future of pharmacy education in America, North America. We're happy to welcome our first time annual meeting attendees, and especially those of you who've been paired with a more experienced attendee as part of the new faculty mentoring program. More than 200 attendees are participating in this inaugural program, either as mentors or mentees. And I commend all of them for their dedication to learning and to serving the academy. I hope you'll find many ways to learn and connect during these few days, and maybe even to have a meal together. And I hope you enhance your careers once you return home. Now, I didn't sign up to be a mentor this year, but I definitely will do it next. And to those veterans who attend year after year, I encourage you to share your knowledge and expertise with colleagues and old acquaintances while here at National Harbor. We've expanded our programming and added more new features. Tuesday's closing session the closing reception, it's not really a reception, it's a party, we're gonna dance, and a performance by Capital Steps, just to name a few. And you are not gon going to want to miss the Capital Steps uh, presentation, it is outlandish. The annual meeting is truly a meeting built and delivered by our members. AACP received more than 200 its submissions for special sessions, mini presentations. To say this provided an unprecedented opportunity for peer review by our very hardworking program committee is an understatement. They did a tremendous job. Please help me thank these outstanding volunteers now displayed on the screens for their work. Approximately 70% of section, SIG, mini and special sessions are eligible for CE credit, plus this session and two other plenaries on Monday and Tuesday. So don't forget to stay for the CE code at the end of this session. Now on the screens are the AACP Board of Directors. I ask my colleagues on the board to stand so we can applaud their leadership, volunteer efforts, and dedication to the association. Please stand. I can tell you that group works so well together and has wonderful, the conversations are absolutely phenomenal. So what else is new? I already mentioned the new faculty mentoring program. Another exciting addition is the Tuesday general session. AACP wanted to provide even more educational and inspirational content at this meeting. And so our keynote speaker, Dr. Freeman Robowski, will deliver on both accounts. He'll set the stage for a lively and perhaps provocative performance by Capital Steps, followed by one fi final opportunity for our party. And Wednesday offers even more educational sessions, a global workshop 
and of course, our House of Delegates. I thank the delegates and the alternates for your service. Just a reminder, in a few minutes, we'll recognize the Chalmers and the Weaver Award winners. The Dawson and Volweiler Awards will be presented at the Science Symposium on Monday, and the Lyman and Student Community Engaged Service Awards will be presented at the Tuesday General Session. We have a very special group to thank for their contributions that make the annual meeting possible, and that's our sponsors now listed on the screens. I ask everyone to join me in a round of applause to express our deep appreciation for their generous support. I want to acknowledge two groups of people who impact pharmacy education in very important ways, both now and in the future this year's Master Preceptors, and our 11th cohort, isn't it great, 11 years of, of Walmart scholars. Our Master Preceptors have demos demonstrated their dedication and commitment to experience in experiential education and professional practice. And our Walmart scholars and their faculty members are here with us, learning firsthand about the rewarding careers in academic pharmacy. Please join me in congratulating them also. As we get ready to shine the spotlight on our outstanding leaders within our academy, I want to take the opportunity to recognize over 300 of our most promising faculty who have participated in the Academic Leadership Fellows Program over the past 11 years. It has been a privilege for me and a highlight of my career to be involved in the program as a speaker, a facilitator, and for, a ten, year, and for 10 years, a dean mentor for my own faculty members. This is an amazing, life-changing program for all of those involved. It is equally delightful to be celebrating the conclusion of the second cohort cohort of our Academic Research Fellows Program at this meeting. I urge you to continue your support of leadership in team science by nominating yourself or a colleague for this important program. The application deadline is rapidly approaching. It's April, August 3rd. And now I'm really pleased to begin the award presentations. First, the Robert K. Chalmers Distinguished Educator, Distinguished Pharmacy Educator Award, given since 1981, recognizes excellence in pharmacy education. This year, we honor John E. Murphy, Associate Dean and Professor of Academic Affairs and Assessment at the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy for his excellence as a teacher, his outstanding achievements as an author and mentor, and his overall impact on pharmacy education and the profession. Dr. Murphy joined the UA College of Pharmacy as a professor and head of the Department of Pharmacy Practice and Science in 2001. He held the position of Assistant Dean for Professional Affairs from 2003 to 2005 and gained his current title as Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Assessment in 2005. He is the recipient of several professional and teaching awards, including the Award for Sustained Contributions to the Literature of Pharmacy Practice from the ASHP Research and Education Foundation in 2003. The Education Award from the Ameri American College of Clinical Pharmacy in 2012, and the Harvey A. K. Whitney Award from ASHP in 2014. John, please join me on stage.
You know, I have to tell you. Here's the award. Yeah. But it, it comes apart. <laughs> so two pieces. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Chase, for the very kind introduction. I'd like to begin with thanks first to my nominator, Brian Erstad, and the former students and colleagues that supported the nomination with letters, Dr. Darcy, Daisy L. Gerfin, Theodoro, Vandenberg, and Winter. I owe you all. Thanks also to the selection committee. I sincerely appreciate being chosen. Thanks to the University of Florida for a great education and to the forward-thinking faculty of the PharmD program who thought it important to require a course in educational techniques. I'm so fortunate to have had that opportunity. Thanks to Mercer University for giving me a job, my first one, <laughs> and allowing pursuit of various professional and clinical paths that I took, some that weren't uh, very traditional at the time. My first dean, Oliver Littlejohn, required all of us to be members of AACP, affording an important link to this organization that delivers crucial support for success as an academic. I owe an extreme debt of gratitude to the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy for, will, for what will be my second and final position in academia. The amazing faculty and administration, including the likes of past AACP Presidents Cole, Drogalis, and Bootman have provided much inspiration over the past 24 years. There's never been a time when I thought that teaching wasn't valued at the college. And though there are certainly high expectations for research and service, teaching well has always been a priority. Finally, thanks to my wonderful wife, Debbie, and my very supportive family who have put up with many long work days and time away at meetings to allow me the successes that I've enjoyed. Receiving the Robert K. Chalmers Distinguished Educator Award is an honor of a lifetime. Many of the individuals recognized with this award, as well as the person for which it was named, have helped shape the face of pharmacy education. I'm very pleased to be counted among that group. At the same time, I'm also happy to be counted among the many educators across the world that get up every day with little thought for recognition and try to make a difference in the lives of their students, whether they're kindergartners or graduate students. Choosing academia as a career 36 years ago is one of the best choices I ever made. I can't remember a day when I didn't look forward to getting up, going to work, and accomplishing something of value from teaching a lecture to writing a paper. It's hard to ask for more than that, so this award is really just wonderful icing on a truly beautiful cake. Over the years, I've tried to understand how to help students learn and enjoy doing research about academic matters. There have been many successes and quite a few failures in teaching, and I've learned from both. As I look forward to retirement in the next few years, I have to admit a degree of disappointment in not being back at the beginning instead, because there are so many interesting teaching and learning methods being developed. My final thanks goes to all you faculty and staff that toil daily to develop the best pharmacists in the world. You inspire me to be better. Keep up that important work so that our patients will reap the benefits. Thank you. Some people are tall. <laughs> oh well. The Lawrence C. Weaver Transformative Community Service Award recognizes significant institutional commitment to addressing unmet community needs through education, practice, and research. The award highlights community service as an important element of the academic mission. It singles out institutions that serve as examples of social responsiveness on the part of the academic health professions community. 
Our recipient of the 2015 award is the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Pharmacy, recognized for its deep dedication to community service through several initiatives, such as the Pharmacist Collaborative Care and Outreach in the Community Program. This program includes uh, academic community partnerships with independent senior living facilities and underserved clinics, large-scale community outreach programs, and programs to train the next generation of health professionals. Since it began in 2001, the PCOC program has grown to include seven formal community partnerships. And during that time, 17 full-time faculty members, more than 600 students, and 37 residents have provided more than 33,000 patient care uh, encounters in the great greater Richmond area. That is truly awesome. Accepting the Weaver Award on behalf of the VCU School of Pharmacy is Dr. K.C. Obawana, Assistant Professor at the VCU School of Pharmacy, Dr. Joe DePiro, former AJPE uh, editor of AJPE and Dean and the Archie O. McCallie Chair at VCU. Joe is also a past Chalmers winner. I'd now like to present the award. Thank you, President Chase. It's my pleasure to accept the Lawrence C. Weaver Transformative Community Service Award on behalf of the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Pharmacy faculty, staff, and students. The activities that led to the award began many years ago by faculty members at VCU to establish partnerships in our community primarily directed at underserved populations in the Richmond area. Over the years, these partnerships have grown and expanded, and we've called them collectively Pharmacists, Collaborative Care, and Outreach in the Community. The programs not only provide care, they serve as sites for student training and interprofessional team activities. The program was also recognized earlier this year with the Peter McGrath Community Engagement Award from the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. It was special for me as a new dean at VCU to learn about the services that our faculty provide at places such as Imperial Plaza, Dominion Place, the Daily Planet, Richmond Center for High Blood Pressure, and Crossover Healthcare Ministry. All of these programs were supported and promoted by my predecessor at VCU, Dean Victor Yanchik. I want to recognize and commend all of the 17 faculty members involved in this work for their dedication to underserved communities. The work has been supported by a number of people at our university from President Michael Rao on down and including Dr. Kathy Howard and the Division of Community Engagement. I want to thank AACP and the Selection Committee for this recognition to our school. I'm pleased to be here with our faculty members, Drs. Casey Ogbana, Tish Matsugemba, Sally Mayer, Tom Reinders, and Krista Donahoe. And Dr. Obano will now provide comments on behalf of our faculty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Casey Obwanda, and I'm here representing the faculty involved in the PCOC program. As our dean has already stated, we are truly grateful for the recognition. As faculty, we often look for ways to immerse our students in meaningful practice-based experiences, aiming to improve their knowledge base, their clinical skills. Through our community engagement activities, we've been able to meet these objectives while also redefining what our students understand as community. No longer are our students learning about a population Instead, they're working with that population. 
What makes this program unique is our strategic planning and our scholarship. We've made a meaningful approach or um, strategies to incorporate our community partners in all our research endeavors. Of course, none of this would be possible without the support of your leadership. So special thanks to Dean DePiro. Special thanks to Dean Janchek, if you could please stand and be recognized. And the rest of our administrative team, thank you for your unwavering support and seeing the value in these types of experiences. Finally, and most importantly, I'd like to thank our community partners. Their willingness to engage has led to remarkable and long-standing relationships. And obviously, due to this award, this award really goes to our community partners. So for that, we are thankful and appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, <laughs> and congratulations to you, past president and former VCU Dean Yanchek, and all the faculty, students, and residents whose work has transformed tens of thousands of li lives of the people in, Richmond, in the Richmond community. I am so proud to be associated with individuals and institutions like those we have just recognized and I'm proud to have served as this year's AACP president. It's been quite a remarkable year for the association, and I'd like to take just a few minutes before introducing our keynote speaker to summarize some of our key accomplishments. I don't know if you remember, but a year ago, as I assumed this office, I took you all on an excursion and compared the changes in higher education and healthcare to whitewater rafting, a favorite West Virginia pastime. This is indeed an exciting and challenging time, a period of monumental change. The changes are so great and happening so quickly that it can be difficult to process them and to respond appropriately. I emphasize that the changes to our environment had three common themes access, affordability, and accountability, and I charge the AACP standing committees to study important aspects of our work with these themes as their central focus. As they have done in the past, each committee embarked on a serious analysis of their charges. The work contained in their reports is extraordinary, far-reaching, and in some cases you'll find controversial. I'd like to say that in some cases they poked a few skunks, which is one of my favorite phrases. You'll have the opportunity to hear each chair present a summary of their work at the special session tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Don't miss it. You'll be sad if you do. The Academic Affairs Committee, chaired by Carrie Franson, took the broadest view of pharmacy education with respect to the three themes. And I have to say, they did find some sk skunks to poke. Much as Kevin Carey describes in his book, The End of College, our committee declared that higher education, and specifically pharmacy education, may have just become too expensive and too cumbersome. Financially unstable and failing to adequately meet the needs of our students. The remedies proposed by the committee include seriously re examining our approaches to delivering content, measuring achievement, and identifying new collaborative approaches to creating and maintaining an all encompassing continuous quality assurance process for accreditation. That was one of the skunks they poked. Their recommendations certainly validate the bold action of the AACP Board of Directors in 2014 
to embark on the development of educational games to advance interprofessional education. MIMICS engages teams of learners in ways that enhance their collaboration in the context of health scenarios and offers faculty rich data on student learning and team performance. Don't miss the MIMICS booth in the registration area of the meeting this week where you can even play the game. The Advocacy Committee, chaired by Bob Mangione, considered how AACP and member institutions are positioned to influence public policy to assist higher education in addressing the issues of access, affordability, and accountability. Their report guides AACP members to develop effective strategies, kind of gives us a little tiny crystal ball to look at what's happening. The Professional Affairs Committee, chaired by Charles Taylor, examined the question of PharmD graduate professional practice readiness, and specifically the 30% of the pharmacy curriculum dedicated to experiential education. They focused on the value proposition for students, the healthcare delivery system, and our colleges from this perspective. They identified a limited body of evidence aimed at demonstrating value, including one study that evaluated almost 60,000 APPE student interventions for just one school over an entire year with an estimated value of 8.5 million. The committee declares that we need a new global vision to define and emphasize the value of pharmacy education. The goal would be to advance innovative, innovative educational programs that better align with the emerging value-based healthcare environment. This has the potential to reinforce the value of our students and our colleges. They urge us to be leaders in advancing innovative models of practice across the United States. And one of the skunks, skunks they poke is that they challenge us to flip experiential education. Ask yourselves, are your student pharmacists practicing in models that prepare them for the future? And do they show value to the site? The Research and Graduate Affairs Committee, chaired by Natalie Eddington, has a two-year assignment. This is to give them time to complete their charges as they developed an academy-wide recommendations, recommended competencies for graduate programs. This will include a suggested roadmap for the evaluation of graduate programs. And they will lay out competencies, outcomes and assessment approaches for postdoctoral fellowship programs. They'll use the framework articulated in the 2014 NIH NIH Biomedical Workforce Report. The Argus Commission, comprised of our last five AACP presidents, took an analysis of how big data would affect future practice, learning, and research. Of these three mission components, they found that our researchers are already the most affected by access to work and big data and certainly have exemplars who are thriving in this new area and it, of computational power and in information science. They found examples across all of our research enterprise. Okay. Argus challenges us to consider if we are adequately preparing our graduates for practice and engaging in quality assurance immersed in a sea of data that will come from electronic health records, genomic analyses, and personalized self-information sources. But the largest game changer, consistent with recommendations from the Academic Affairs Committee, will be the use of predictive analytics in our admissions practices in our teaching, learning, and student assessment efforts. This, in 2013, AAC President Peggy Piazak established a special committee on admissions that was chaired by Andrea Wall. 
This committee has been working intensely over the past two years to address the admissions landscape and present recommendations for policy and action on this critical component of our members' success. At our meeting this week, the AACP Board of Directors requested a detailed plan to intensify AACP's work in recruitment and the applicant pipeline development. At our November board meeting, we will determine how to accelerate implementations of the recommendations from this important committee. It's interesting because in the course of their work, our committees discovered that there was in fact a, an A missing from the access, affordability, and accountability. And that was acceleration. The issues these members addressed are so significant that we can't afford to just talk about them any longer. We have to take action. In some cases, the committees found decades-old recommendations for action, but insufficient follow-through. In other cases, they affirmed that the environments around us in healthcare and in higher education are changing so dramatically that if we stay the same, we are indeed vulnerable. I am confident that AACP has the vision to, and the will to take bold and decisive action to communicate the values of pharmacy services provided by our faculty students, and graduates, and in doing so, enrich the pipeline for future leaners, learners. AACP will continue to enable members to improve the cost-effectiveness assessment strategies to prepare our graduates to improve the cost of effectiveness and quality of care for everyone, and through programs like the Academic Leadership Fellows and the Academic Research Fellows, AACP will equip the next generation of academic and research leaders to accelerate the change in the academy and our communities. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this one, but this was uh, really fun. While it may seem at times like we are hurtling down the whitewater rapids, just remember that AACP programs and services are indeed your life preservers. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your president, truly a capstone for my career, and I want to thank you for your support. <laughs>